Hello students, welcome back to another episode of Principles of Micro. We looked at price elasticity last time, now we're going to look at income elasticity. In other words, how sensitive is demand to income? So our formula will define it to be EI for the elasticity of income. That'll be percent change in Q divided by percent change in income. We'll use our midpoint method similar to what we had before. That'll be change in Q over average Q divided by change in income over average income. Again, this is a little bit of an approximation. If you were to take intermediate micro, you'll see a calculus-based formula instead. So in chapter three, we talked about how income can shift demand. It depends upon whether the good is a normal good or an inferior good. For normal goods, you buy more of them when your income goes up. So that means that if a change in income is positive, then change in Q should also be positive. A positive over a positive is going to be positive. So EI should be greater than zero. EI should be positive if we're looking at normal goods. Most goods out there we said were normal goods, hence the name normal. The other kind of good is inferior goods. You buy less inferior goods when your income rises. So once you get your first job out of college, maybe you can stop buying ramen noodles. You can afford something nicer. So it's going to be this negative relationship between income and quantity. When quantity goes, sorry, when income goes up, you have a plus down here, quantity goes down, a negative in on top. So again, minus over a plus, that works out to a negative. So EI should be less than zero if you have an inferior good. Now within the category of normal goods, we have two subcategories. There are necessities and then there are luxuries. So necessity has an elasticity between zero and one. So goods that you really depend upon are ones that you don't change your consumption very much. You change a little bit, but not very much when your income changes. So let's talk about groceries. If your income were to cut in half, you're not going to start eating half as much. Maybe you start buying more ramen noodles again and you cut back on some of the more expensive stuff but cutting your budget in half is not really going to be a very viable option. So if your income falls by 50% your consumption falls by less than 50%. So just to pick a number let's say income elasticity is 0.4. So the change in your quantity is going to be 0.4 times that 50% drop in income, that means you cut back by 20%. Now, luxuries are things you don't really need, so as a result, that can change quite a bit depending upon your income. So restaurants, by its definition, would count as a luxury. If your income were to double, then your, oh dear, I see a typo. If your income were a double, then your consumption would more than double. If your consumption triples, then your percentage in Q, oh wait, that's actually right. Never mind. So if your consumption doubles, it's a 100% increase. And if your consumption triples, it's a 200% increase. So you have a 200% or 100%, so that works out to two. So there is no mistake on the slide. EI is two. 
So that wraps up our section on income elasticity. In our next episode, we'll talk about the cross price elasticity.